With regards to talks of who the most enigmatic being in Tevat is, people often repeat the same names, be it Paimon, the Heavenly Principles, Celestia as a whole, or the Sinner. However, there, there's one person whose name needs to be brought up more than it is. Alice. See, that name right there should tip you off, bro. You got all these niggas, the Heavenly Principles, who control the world, the Sinner with the power of the Abyss, and then Alice. A woman with a husband and daughter, that's it. It's like that one joke where you you, 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 you catch sight of a solitary Caucasian individual running with a, with, with, with a gathering of unscrupulous, darker-skinned homo sapiens. You know what they say, the one white dude in a gang is the most dangerous son bitch in the group because who knows what that nigga had to do to get in there, bro? That's Alice. Hell, I even had her as my fifth most powerful being in our most powerful characters in Genshin lore video above all the gods. Now, you might think I'm crazy for that, but hey, let's discuss. Alice is first and foremost a mother to little Klee, who both come from a race of pointy-eared people who live long lives. Alice is also a witch, but not just any witch. She's the witch to end all witches, the grand sorceress whose mastery spans many, many fields, from astrology to alchemy. This differs from other witches, such as Rhyndoder and Barbaloth, who are one-trick ponies, good at their own fields, not much else. It's perhaps due to this that Alice became the elder of the Hexen Circle. However, this title could simply be due to her age, which at the very least is over 500 years old, and accounting for Perrin Harry could be well over 2,000 years old. In any case, despite 500 years being the absolute minimum, she should at the very least be considerably older than that given she referred to the over 500 year old Yai Miko as Little Yai and wrote about how easy it was to make her cry when she was younger. <laughs> a bit of a menace. <laughs> uh, speaking of writings, the reason Alice is known well amongst the common folk is due to her book, the Tevat Travel Guide. However, in this book reads less like a guide and more like a journal, with such examples being quotes, the Yano Archon is a bit too undisciplined for me. If I were a god, I would not have allowed my realm to look so unorganized and ragged. With enough bombs placed in proper positions, even huge cliffs like Star Snatch would crumble into dust in a second. With flatter terrain, monsters that would surely look much nicer. Honestly, I mean, we, we should know this by now. I agree with her. I, I man, I, if there's one nigga who loves flatlands, it's me, but... You know, maybe that's just the African in me speaking. <laughs> Given this is a travel guide for all of Tevat, naturally, Alice is an adventurer who's traveled far and wide, but it appears she's taken that phrase a, a, a bit too literally, as she, she has vast knowledge of the inner workings of other worlds aside from Tevat. Alice was the one who introduced Barbara to the topic of idols by having her read a magazine that wasn't from this world. Quotes, Idol Magazine was the name of the assigned reading material. Barbara had no idea what world this magazine had come from, but by reading it, she found out that there was indeed such a thing as an idol, that it mainly involved working hard at getting everyone to like you. Alice also created Tevat's own cell phone, for limited use, but it was still a cell phone, uh, called the Dodoko communication device, which according to Venti, is based on technology from another world. There's also her apparently fucking famous saying, this blank is your Rubicon, first noted by, hmm, Z Cheong? In the chasm, who remarks that Alice has seen the entire world. The word Rubicon would pop up once more in Chen Yu Vei, a little Mao, would tell us he was once traversing the caves with a mysterious lady, who told him this cave was his Rubicon. Now, the Rubicon, for those unaware, is a river in North Italy. It's a it's a regular-ass river, whose significance lies in the fact that Julius Kaiser once crossed it with his army, breaking Roman law and starting a civil war that led to the downfall of the Republic and the rise of the Empire. It stated that when crossing the river, Kaiser remarked, Alea Yakta S, which translates to the die is cast. Ever since then, the phrase crossing the Rubicon is meant to signify passing the point of no return. Yeah, seven years of Latin pain off, my nigga. Come fuck with me, Spanish who? Oh, I'm sorry, that felt a little personal, bro. It's just, bro, when I fucking when I went into high school, the niggas was like, you're not allowed to speak English in the Spanish classroom. There was a whole sign that said, "New not speak English here. I said, ho, ho, time to go learn about the fucking Romans, because huh, not speaking English, this is this is beyond my capabilities. Anyway, we're getting, we're getting way off topic. <laughs> uh, so this combined with the idol and cell phone information has led some to believe that Alice has ventured off this world onto other planets, including Earth. There's also the case of the Wings of Feasting Wind Glider, which is said to come from another world before being scooped up by Alice, recolored and gifted to Klee. And along with the glider, gave her notes about, uh, 
how the world of Tevat came to be in the most bizarre recounting I think w w has ever existed. It goes something like this. Uh, the world was once ruled by dragons, okay, that checks out, before suddenly uh, humanity just appeared out of nowhere. Okay, okay, I mean, I suppose, you know, wanting to spare the little ones of the details of a brutal war, I wonder how we're gonna... Uh, reconcile that with the fact that we don't see dragons everywhere. Uh, humanity apparently decided Sunday dinners were the best thing ever! And you know what the best tasting thing ever was on Sunday dinners? DRAGONS! Apparently them niggas are finger licking good! The dragons naturally didn't take too kindly to this, but humanity didn't care! And managed to drive the dragon race into extinction by turning all of them into fried chicken! <laughs> oh, this verse is more fucked than the real one! Uh, Nerf 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 over here getting fired up about the Heavenly Principles as well as fucking brethren was getting fired up over the grill before the Sunday game, man! You can't make this shit up, dog. I I, I could just picture the tactics they use to lure the dragons. All, all the humanity and dragons just living peacefully by one another. Humanity invites the dragons over to the house for, for, for su Sunday feast. Uh, oh, 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 what are we, what are we having for dinner, guys? <laughs> you, <got a> nice <laughs> you niggas. <laughs> <laughs> With that said, however, it's never been confirmed that Alice has ever left this world or hails from beyond, and with the reveal that the third descender is either dead or in pieces, it's extremely unlikely she's any one of the descenders. Anyway, the most interesting of all of Alice's feats is her immunity to Ermensoul, which seems to be a byproduct of her task. The world of Tevat has its own rules. They aren't perfect, though. And in some cases, they are as delicate and fragile as the human heart. <laughs> That's why I've been tasked with the job I have now. A job which gives me certain special privileges. I'm someone who likes having the freedom to live their own life. But I don't mind this job. It gives me the chance to see this world and everything that lives in it from a lot of different perspectives. People can find ways to forget. But they can't undo what they've done, and there's no escaping the past. The Wanderer learned this the hard way. What this job is, what special privileges Alice has been granted, and by whom, are all a complete mystery. However, one potential benefactor could be the Heavenly Principles, and I say this due to the border. <laughs> been hearing a lot about those. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> to that, as we all know, has a border that shields it from the outside world. The border is created by Fane's eggshell, and it protects the whole of Tevat. It was described as a border in the description of the all-devouring narwhal, writing, quote, maybe the universe has been constantly trying to infiltrate Tevat, or maybe a higher power created borders to protect this world. However, Given we know the world is under constant threats of forbidden knowledge and whatever the fuck is actually outside the border, the barriers have been torn down numerous times due to the black magic. It's interesting to learn then that the reason Alice has been away constantly is because, quote, Tibet's borders have grown fragile in these past two years. Looks like mommy's going to have to get busy. To put it simply, my friends, greatness recognizes greatness, from one being who knows what the outside world is like in Alice, to another being who knows what the outside world is like in the Primordial One, a progenitor god, hailing from beyond the stars. It seems like they both have a common interest in keeping the borders up. And the Abyss will pay for this border. <laughs> But what's chipping away at the border, and why is Alice taking it upon herself to respond to this, is unknown. But it seems to be eating a considerable amount of her time, given we've yet to meet her, and she's only briefly been able to visit Klee a couple of times in Mondstadt every now and again. Now with that said, I personally just wouldn't like it if Alice was in any way reliant or connected to the Heavenly Principles for her to be free, because then it feels like she's no different than anyone else. I would find it more endearing if she was just this rogue witch who was this third party, not aligned with the Fatui, not aligned with the Abyss, and not aligned with the Heavenly Principles. She became this powerful by her own will and machinations, and given she and the other witches once tried to challenge the Animal Archon, I find it just unlikely she would align herself with Celestia. I think most likely, she just came this way all on her own, and assuming the borders she speaks of are the same as Celestia's borders, the reason she's helping out is because at the end of the day, nothing good awaits this world that holds her family outside the border.